Hi, this is Kim Sunshine here with the Kim Sunshine Show. And I am with All Heating and Air. All Volution Flagler Heating and Air. All Volution. Are you sure you're not doing the whole country? Not yet. So maybe we're so. speaking those things that are not as if they were. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully soon. We'll see. So you, planned. so you handle all of Volusia County and Flagler County? We do. Yeah, we do heating and AC, family owned. Um, all Volusia County, all Flagler County. Uh, state license, so we can take on major jobs depending on where we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we, we tend to focus on Volusia and Flagler County. Awesome. And how long have you guys been in business? Uh, we're going on 14 years now. Brian, you don't look old enough to have been in business for 14 years. No, no. No, we're family owned. So thankfully, uh, I'm very honored and proud to say that uh, uh, I'm partners with my father. He's been doing it his whole life. That um, is so cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a dream come true, not only for him, but for me too. You know, yeah. it's something that I dreamed of doing. I was that little kid that, uh, um, you know, would ride, you know, four or five years old, six years old, ride with him in the truck. So um, it's been a, been a fun ride so far being with them. That's cool. And I hear a little New York, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. What am I hearing there? Jersey? Yeah, yeah. We're from New Jersey originally. Yeah, what part? We've been here. Um, North Jersey, around Newark. Newark. Newark oh, area. okay. Yep. Okay, good. Yep. So so I just went there last year, the year before. What'd you think? Well, I I lived in Edison, but okay. Newark's a little different than Edison. Yeah. I lived in Edison and I was, you know, my kids were small, so I didn't right. do a whole bunch, you know what I mean? But we went to, um, actually, to Elizabeth, to the Portu- okay. Portuguese side, and went down yep, I've got uh, Ferry there. Street and, and just enjoyed all the different foods. It's amazing, yeah, yeah, the different cultures. I didn't even know that was all there when I lived in Edison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a fun community. Uh, I'll say this. I'm happy to be here. You know, sure. I love, I love the weather here, and I've been here most of my life at this point. Yeah. I'm like, um, going on probably 18 years now, so I, I, I don't think there's any reason why I would leave honest with you yeah me either yeah. me either so. this beach is just too absolutely beautiful it's great and um so when i did go there it was november and it was so dreary even just getting off the airplane in mm-hmm. newark like like you know you're going somewhere yeah. fun and it's gonna be a good time you're excited to go there but you're automatically like oh i'll tell you what it's nice it's nice because it's close enough to the city where um, you know, you can go in, you can enjoy yourself. There's a lot of energy there, a lot of good food. Yes. Um, the food is amazing. Know. Yeah. Well, that's so. what we're trying to do with our foodies. Five mm-hmm. star is really elevate the food here. We do have, um, some really, really good places and, um, we're just looking to see if we can help everybody turn it up a notch right? to get some of I'm that. Excited. Really? I'm excited to see it. Cause, uh, I mean, there's a lot of good mom and pop places in the area mm-hmm. to be able to have a, a network that, uh, is going to help. Uh, for lack of better words, accentuate that and, and help promote those good businesses. Um, that's exciting for the community. Well, you know, I'm uh, my heart is for small businesses. Now, did your dad run heating and air in Newark? So he did. Yeah, he uh, he graduated from high school, knew right away that he wanted to do it. Right, so he went to tech school uh, after about two years, uh, mm-hmm. Lincoln Technical School. Um, he went with a a business partner. Um, they actually he actually worked for. Uh, a few different businesses in the area for about four to five years. Okay. And then they decided they were going to try their own thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and during that whole experience, again, he did a little bit of refrigeration, a little commercial, a little industrial. Sure, you know, sure. Um, gained some experience and then went right into it, had his own sheet metal shop up north, you know. Wow. Uh, so he kind of kind of worked off all parts of the trade. And, awesome. Uh, so he did that and uh, had his business there for t- going on 20, 25 years. Um, you know, decided they were kind of sick of the cold weather. You know, and at that who point, isn't? Right. I mean, listen, if you're listening and you're up north, I know a great realtor. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you know, they made that change like many of us do coming down. Um, and actually, you know, he came down, decided they were going to take a break from the HVAC side of things. Okay. Um, they opened up a restaurant right down the road. Here. A restaurant? Really? Yeah. What was it? So, it was a, a Brazilian restaurant. My mother's okay. Brazilian, my father's Portuguese. Oh, okay. So, yep. that's why you guys lived in Newark. Yep. Okay. Yep, exactly. I did so, not know you had a Portuguese Brazilian yeah. connection. So, oh, yeah. so you eat bacalhau all the time. Yeah, yeah, every once in a while. Feijoada is good. Feijoada? Yeah. Uh, okay, yep. so do you do a Brazilian style with the black beans, or are you doing yep. it the Portuguese style with the, with the white, yellow beans? I grew up with the black beans. Okay, yep. okay. Yep. So but so he did that. Where Osteria is today mm-hmm. uh, is where we had the restaurant, and um, wow, you know, it, it was a fun experience. Uh, I'll say this, owning your own restaurant is a lot different than than, than visiting one. Absolutely. You know? so, that is uh, a just like any business. You know, I think that a lot of people look at a new business and they get excited mm-hmm. and um, and 
they don't realize the amount of things that are happening behind the scenes in any yeah. given business at any given time. Yeah. And a restaurant is really not even just the hours that you're open because there's a yeah. lot of prep that goes in, in, involved as well yeah. as shopping. I mean, on yeah. your days off, you're shopping for, it was, <laughs> for it was this. truly the closest thing you can come to, I think for a 24 seven business for, you know, family owned business. You yeah. Know, we'd be in there. It was a group, it was a group effort, but we'd be in there seven o'clock in the morning. Yep. We would leave two o'clock after cleanup yep. you know, in the morning because yep. we would close anywhere between 10 and 12. Right. You know? So, um, well, it it's Portuguese. So it's yeah. like a dinner's not over when dinner's over. I yeah. mean, you got to have your espresso. You got you to gotta espresso, have your, you hang out for a little your bit. little drink or whatever so, it is. So yes, but, <laughs> but it was a fun experience. Did that, you know, after about a year, year or so, um, realized that just wasn't the lifestyle that, that, uh, he wanted to be in that we wanted to be in, yep. you know? Um, so he made that transition back to HVAC. Um, again, at that point in time, I was uh, graduating high school, going into college. Okay. Um, and again, most of my childhood, I was kind of so, growing up with him doing the HVAC. So you graduated right here in Palm Coast. I did right out of uh, FPC. Oh, really? Right the awesome, yep. awesome. Yep. So did that. I went to UCF, um, studied there, got my uh, my bachelor's degree in entrepreneurial business management. Very good. Um, all with basically the goal of coming back and, and jumping in with him. My biggest. Uh, the biggest goal I had, to be honest with you, was, again, going back to, uh, I jumped in that van with him as a little kid, and I knew he had a certain joy, and he always has to this day, of of controlling his own day-to-day and, yep. and building things his way. Yep. The downside to that was, you know, he, he tried different ventures, and with that, you know, it's not like you're working for big corporations, right. so you don't have this pension to fall back right. on, right? So right. my goal was to hopefully come in and, and put my touch on the business and hopefully get it to a point where... Uh, he can retire on his own terms and didn't have to worry about, you know, where where, that, where those bills are going to get Like Alyssa you know? Thornton says about Alan Thornton had Edward Jones, exactly. that she is his retirement program. Exactly. And, it's, and I'll tell you what, it's something that, that gives me a certain sense of pride that, um, you know, I, I don't think it doesn't matter what I would do with my life. That's right. just something that to me, uh, it, it's very easy to get up and want to be good at what you do when you yeah. have that fuel. Yeah. yeah. So. That's exciting. And so your dad has loved his job and loved what he's doing that's the whole all, time. That's all he thinks about. And then yeah. you see that and it just makes you happy. Yeah. I mean, he's happy. I'm happy. And I'm passionate. I became passionate about the field as well. You know, mm-hmm. so, you know, it's a little bit of everything. But it, the backbone for me is, is um, you know, again, it's it's building that business that I know has the right values. Exactly. You know? um, we think about the customer first. Um, we're family owned. So we yep. have to do things the right way or else our employees don't eat. We don't eat. You exactly. Know? So. Um, we're a small business and very proud to be a small business. We're not looking to get big anytime, anytime too quickly. Right. Exactly. So. Cause, cause there's a, a quality of life. There's, a, there's give and take. And, um, if you can, you know, as long as you're happy and successful with your business mm-hmm. and you're managing everything well. And it's again, at the end of the day, it's, it's being able to control the quality first yes. of what we, what we do out there for our customers. That's important. Um, and, and so being a small business really allows us to to be involved with every aspect of, of what we do. So, so if there's somebody out there who's watching who might be in high school and might be thinking about mm-hmm. doing a trade school, what would you say to them as Try far it. as HVAC? Try it. I mean, it's, it's a very rewarding field. Um, it's a field, and not just, I'll say this, HVAC because I'm in it, but trades in general. We are, this country right now is desperate uh, for any, any tradesman. Um, yep. You could be, it's a very lucrative, very... Uh, rewarding, uh, all, all the trades, anything you want to go into trade wise, blue collar, very rewarding, mm-hmm. um, and very low barrier of entry. You know, you can right. get out of school as long as you have an open mind, you can get out of school and trade schools are fantastic, yes. but you can get your first opportunity out of school as an apprentice with many, many companies in the area. Um, they will pay you even if it's minimum wage, they will pay you to Isn't be involved in the job site. And that's how you're going to learn. Isn't that amazing? Start. And these so. doctors have to work for free for a long time to get their medical. Yeah. I know I'm, maybe that you're not making money as a doctor, but it's just interesting how mm-hmm. there's still apprenticeship available where you can get in there's out of school. A ton, a ton of opportunities. So what if there's someone who's graduated? Are you guys entertaining any applications at this time? Yeah, absolutely. We always are. Always okay. are. And really the biggest thing for us is we want our, our, our apprentices starting with an open mind. Okay. Um, they have to realize that, you know, having an open mind, you're going to get your hands involved with everything. And right. that experience is the best, uh, the best educator in our mind. Exactly. You know? So, yeah, absolutely. We're always looking for that right candidate. So how many um, teams do you guys have out right now? Yeah, we've got a staff of about eight guys out in the field. Wow, yeah. that's pretty big. So th- so they can handle if you have an emergency or a situation mm-hmm. that needs handled pretty quickly. You guys yeah. can handle that, Brian? Yeah, we're pretty flexible, which I'm pretty proud of, you know, so um 
we, we take on all different types of jobs. Um, and, and again, the way we kind of set up our schedule and the way we communicate with our customers, um, we do have certain priorities, uh, the elderly, the, those that uh, have any kind of uh, medical attention. Um, we try to prioritize those customers, those customers, um, uh, at the end of the day, if they don't have functioning air conditioning, it could become a, a medical issue very quickly. Sure. Uh, and so again, having a, a lot of credit goes to having understanding customers that understand yeah. that, um, you know. We can prioritize certain things for certain, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, but that flexibility does allow us to to be quick and, and act on our, on our toes when we have to be. Well, I'll tell you what, Brian, I have referred a few customers to you and everyone has been very, very happy and pleased with the that. service and everything that you guys have done. And um, I have always seen you to be on time and be where you're supposed to be and return calls. I appreciate so that. their company is one that is going to answer the phone. They're going to be there for you, which is something that you need, especially if you're having it like it, here in Florida. It's not like up north, like the heating is not the, the air conditioning is the big issue. Like in the hot yeah. on the hot days of summer. Like it's bad. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's. it's I wouldn't be in Florida if there wasn't for air conditioning. (laughs) I I tell you, I love this beach, but I certainly would not be here if it were not for people like Brian keeping our air conditioning going and keeping it good. (laughs) It's that, and and again, the big thing that here in Florida that we tackle is humidity as well. Yeah, and humidity if if it's not kept in check, um, air quality is a big big thing, and uh, it, it could be a breeding ground for contaminants if it's just not kept in check. So. A big emphasis for for us is not just let's keep the house cool or warm. It's also let's keep the air quality clean. Yeah. Um, let's keep humidity under control. Uh, and so again, keeping routine maintenance checkups on on the equipment. Yep. Uh, and how often do you suggest that as an expert? You know, I, I would tell you a minimum two times a year. Having it looked at by a professional company. Okay. Uh, is a good idea. Um, again, it, it allows us to keep tabs on how the system is performing. Um, most of in our area, quick little you know. Fact in our area, um, a majority of systems that you typically see in residential applications mm-hmm. uh, in Central Florida are going to be heat pumps. Okay. Uh, so with heat pumps, those same pieces of equipment heat and cool your home. Right. right? Yes. So with that being said, these this these systems are going to operate day and night, a majority of the year. You know, uh, all year. Uh, yeah. All year. Yeah. So. You know, they are, it's very different from an application, for example, up north where you have an air conditioner and a furnace. And so your furnace operates three months out of the year, let's say right. three to six months. Your air conditioner operates three to six months. Out and of we the would year. open the windows. Like we would open right. all the doors and windows, but the humidity here really, right. I mean, there's, there's a little season that we get to do that, but right. the humidity really prevents that some of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking generally, right. The equipment here, most equipment we're using it year year round, day and night. So mm-hmm. uh, it does require some maintenance to kind of keep that going. Well, and I heard if things don't work, they break. Have, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so let's put absolutely. it to work. <laughs> and again, it uses your, your HVAC system uses fifty percent of your energy bills, whether you realize it or not. You know? Oh, so, so keeping that tuned up is definitely is make an effect on your bills. So what? So now you and I were talking earlier, mm-hmm. and you said that the homeowner should do some care monthly. And can yeah. you tell everybody what that care should be? Yeah, it's it's simple, you know. And this is something where uh, if you give us a call, we'd be happy to educate you, uh, or if you use a company, they they will as well. Something simple such as filters and and maintaining your drain line are two very easy things monthly that uh, any homeowner can do, and it goes a long way in terms of keeping your system operating uh, at its best capacity, along with those routine checkups by professional contractors. Yeah, because those drain line things, like that is not something I yeah. ever remember up north. I do not yeah. remember those drain lines. Yeah, you have them with air conditioners, uh, but again, down here, our systems operate. We have a lot night, more con- uh, condensation. A lot more condensation, a lot more humidity. Yeah. You know? So uh, it's a little bit more of a priority here for sure. Okay. Okay. So that's a monthly task. And then yep. twice a year is just having you come and actually physically Correct. inspect everything and make sure everything's running to, up to par. Yeah. We make sure everything's tightened up electrically. Everything's clean. Uh, we go through everything. We check your pressures, make sure you don't have any kind of refrigerant leak. Um, the whole gamut from start to finish. And uh, again, there's always something, in my opinion, there's always something that we can rec- recommend. Uh, to better your system, whether it be, you know, taking a look at some parts that are aging, whether it be, hey, we have a brand new system, we right. can look at surge protection and prevent any potential issues in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's always something that we can look at and say, hey, there's always a step that we can do to either protect it further, clean it, keep that prevention from anything growing, you know. So so, so what about that negative Nancy or that mm-hmm. negative Ned that says, if I let this guy come look at my thing, he's just going to tell me I need a new one. So why, yeah. like, this is the mentality of some people. Yeah, if I absolutely. have somebody come in who does air conditioning, heating mm-hmm. and air, but and I just have them look, right. they automatically think that they're going to have to get a new unit. So yeah. how often are you seeing that that is a, is a requirement 
on say a general maintenance call. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm happy that you asked that because, um, you know, my philosophy on that is just that you called us and you hired us for a reason. If yeah. I didn't tell you my professional opinion on where you're going with that system, mm -hmm. you know, when you do have an issue at some point in the future, you'll be upset with me because I didn't mention it. Right. right? So right. part of our jobs as, as licensed contractors is to educate the homeowner. Right? right. And part of that as well is, is we educate our technicians to show every homeowner exactly what we're speaking about. So if we right. see any signs of age, if we see any kind of uh, areas of concern, we want to point that out to you and show you exactly what we're seeing. We want to educate you on exactly those components, what they do mm -hmm. and why it's important to keep an eye on them. And then mm -hmm. ultimately as a homeowner, you have a decision to make whether it's worth investing money into a system and knowing the average lifespan of that system. Right. And knowing what you have to do to keep up with that system. And then eventually get to the point where you say, Hey, you know, is it worth me putting X amount of dollars into this system that no longer may have a warranty right. that I'm paying monthly on my energy bills for? Right. Or should I invest that money into something newer that you're going to have a full warranty, 10 years on the parts, 10 years potentially on labor? That was my you know? question. So, should you just run it into the ground till it doesn't run anymore and, you know, and, and, and then get a new one? And if that's the case, let's say uh, you gave me advice and said, hey, this thing's going to go out in six months. And I'm like, well, mm -hmm. I'm a gambling kind of girl. I'll, I'll take yeah. my chances on that yeah. and not get a new one today. But all of a sudden, six months later, it goes out or a year later. Mm -hmm. And now I have no heating and air whatsoever. How right. long does it take? Do you ha Are you guys keeping things in inventory? Are you able to yeah. get them? Because I know like last year we were having a real problem yep. getting all kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, so we, we do stay pretty stocked up, which is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we partner with some co some supply houses in our area we're based out of daytona let me start with that right we even though I, i'm local and i live here and we're based out of flagler county it's more uh, cost effective to go to daytona i know well, the rent's cheaper down there not for not, a warehouse not that, but for what we do most yes. of the hvac distributors closest to us they have their distribution their distribution centers in daytona oh so, the, the so now that, you're not having to go there to get it you're already there if and i then need something it. i've got relationships with different supply houses where i can have them deliver something to me within a few hours of me ordering it. Wow. You know, or wow, that's a up. flex. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's just that 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 proximity to these supply houses allow for us to provide service. So that's that much why quicker. you guys moved there. Plus the so, rent's usually a little cheaper. <laughs> yeah, but it was the biggest thing for us was that proximity, right? Of course. And so, um, you know, with that being said, again, it, it's typically pretty quick for us to get something in. Now, yeah, right. touching base with what you just said, you know, the My, past two years with the pandemic, every industry... Oh, it of, was horrible you know, because uh, I've heard stories about people not being able to get refrigerators or mm -hmm. stoves. Um, I think those were the two washers and dryers. It was like, yeah. it's a six month wait for a washer and dryer. Yeah. And I'm sitting here imagining what if it's a, an air conditioning unit. Yeah. So what did you guys experience through the pandemic? Yeah, it was the same thing. We definitely had a, a juggling process in terms of we're always in constant communication with our representatives at the mm -hmm. manufacturers. Um, if it was possible for us to get our hands on equipment ahead of time, we mm -hmm. would. Okay. Um, because you never knew when you were going to be able to get that piece of equipment. Exactly. So, Again, so you guys were stocking it up. That's we good. We tried our very hardest. Yeah. Yep. And, and thank, thankfully, it, we never had to wait more than maybe two weeks for a residential system. You know. Wow, and that's even awesome. That was, was a long time. Not all the time. Well, listen, if you don't have heat or air, that is a long <laughs> time. So, so today's market. Let's look at yeah. what's happening today. Yep. It, now, what if I break down today? Yeah. So today, thankfully, we're at a point now, and again, we we work with a couple of different uh, brands, mm -hmm. so I can get a system. Knock on wood, I can pretty much get it installed for you within a two to three day period. Wow, that's awesome! That's yeah. awesome! That is fantastic, so, Brian. So, are there any other tips that you would like to share with everybody? That's the biggest one, and again, education to me is key. So, um, trust your contractor. Work with a good contractor that has good reviews online. Do your homework on your contractors. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will. There, there's a ton of different people that. Um, you can find in Florida that mm -hmm. do HVAC, right. um, make sure they're licensed first and foremost, make sure they have good standing, uh, check the reviews online. Um, you know, working with a good, a good contractor is, is more important than the quote unquote name brands that you hear out there in terms of what equipment you choose to work with. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause uh, you can have the best thing if it's not installed properly, it's It'll not going to work. work. Right. It's not going to work. Yep. Right. Um, okay. So, so one more question for you. What age, if, if my, I've seen air conditioning units like yeah. 20 years old and they're still kicking. Okay. Right. So I know that there's some out there in Flagler County. Mm -hmm. So at what age 
it would it be extremely beneficial because yeah. of the energy consumption because yeah. those older pieces of equipment mm-hmm. consume so much more energy. So at yeah. what age are you like, well, if it's eight years old, you will see a significant change on your electric bill. Yeah. If it's 10 years old, 12, yeah. where would you guess that number would be? Generally speaking, I would tell you, you know, year 10 to 15 is kind of the average lifespan you're, you're going to see on a system Okay, uh, in our area. Now, again, okay. that's generally speaking, if you're by the coast, a lot of times it's going to be a lot it's shorter. It's a lot shorter because um, of the salt in the air. Yeah, yeah. And then again, vice versa, if if you are somebody that keeps up with your system religiously, mm-hmm. um, if you do coil cleans periodically every couple of years, you can maintain that efficiency for, for a, a quite a, bit, a, a quite a bit amount of time. But and again, a lot of that comes down to how much do you invest into keeping your system operating as best as it can uh, on an annual basis. Awesome. Well, yeah. I'm so excited to be working with you, Brian, I and I'm looking here. forward to seeing your business continue to do um, excellent things like it's doing, continue with a fantastic reputation. I appreciate that it. is so important. You know, there's there's some companies, and I'm not saying just in heating and air, but generally mm-hmm. that that aren't thinking of that high level of customer service and the high level of customer care. And um, they're they're more concerned about the getting as much in as they can and moving things through as fast as they can. But everything that I've seen from, um, all Flagler Volusia heating and air. And I just say all heating and air when I talk about you. (laughs) Um, but everything that I've seen from you guys has been that quality is the first thing and the, and the key thing Mm -hmm. that you are thinking about. So if anybody is needing a tune up, if you hadn't had, had your air conditioner looked at in or your heater now, cause we're going to be turning on the heat. So, and I, Oh, I hate that smell. Yeah. Oh, how do you avoid that? Is there any way to get rid of that you know, it's icky smell that when you first turn it on. The first time you turn it on, it can be tough sometimes. Again, the, I'm going to revert right back to what I was telling you. Just just routine maintenance, having somebody periodically okay. take a look and, and keep those heaters clean. Um, but the, it's not unusual. The first time you turn your heater on, um, you kind of have that burning smell for a little right. bit. Um, it's just kind of burning any kind of particles that might have settled on the heat strips, you know. Um it's, so we can't get in there and vacuum it first. I mean, we uh, girls nothing, would totally do that <laughs> if we could to avoid nothing that crazy, smell. Nothing crazy. Be- best thing I would tell you is just have a professional open it up and take a look. Okay. Okay, good. And then, so uh, do you care if I ask how much you charge sure. to come out and do that, to take a look Not at, at systems when people are first turning them on just to make sure yeah. everything's safe? Yeah, we have our, so just for an annual, you know, a one-time maintenance visit, mm-hmm. it's 89.95. 89.95, okay. Uh, yep, we do have some promotions that would discount that for a first-time customer to 49.95. Um, and then if you come can on, can I share night. that with everybody? Like, can we, yeah. can we get that where we can share it with everybody Absolutely. on my page? Okay. Yeah. So there's going to be a coupon attached for anybody who wants to have Brian yep. and his crew come out and take a look at your, um, unit, uh, mm-hmm. your heat pump as you're going to be turning on the heat here anytime. Now we have been so blessed. We have not really had to turn it on yet. Just had to turn yet, off yeah. the <laughs> AC. We haven't had to yet. I don't know. Yeah. But, but yeah, that, and, and again, if it's just to look at, you know, a big thing for me is looking at. Uh, duct work and insulation also. Okay. Um, if if somebody's curious about the age of the system, uh, a, a quote on getting a new system altogether, or duct work or anything like that, um, I'll go out myself, no charge on that. You know, just take a look and give them my opinion. Yeah, and the duct work here in the attic is mm-hmm. so important. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I've seen pictures of crazy things going on in the attic. Yeah. And um and you know the insulation not being there, and yeah. your attic gets so hot, and right. your air conditioner is trying to keep cold air pumping through the vents, right. and you're losing money. And the, so, is that something that you would do? Come and insulate, like if everything's yeah, we, good with my system, yeah. is that something that you guys would be able to do? For sure, it's a complimentary service that we that no we, way. That we offer. Oh, well, how cool is that? Like <laughs> VIP status? <laughs> yeah, so it's something we'll take a look at. Okay, um, you know, and again, that's that's vital. Windows, insulation, duct work is crucial to your system's performance. Um, so, you know, that's why, again, it's important to have somebody that doesn't take a look at all that. Yep. Um, kind of the simplest way I can kind of dumb it down is if I put an ice cube in a corporate box versus a Yeti. Right. It's a lot longer than the it's Yeti, It's true. Right? It's so, true. Um, it's kind of the same concept with your home. If the insulation is kept up with, duct work is kept up with, windows are good, um, your system is going to perform that much better. I didn't know Yeti made insulation. Are you guys using Yeti? Yeah, we'll, have to, yeah, we'll have to figure out a sponsorship on that. Yeah. So so do you, is there different types? Like let's say that um, I own my home and I feel like I'm okay to climb up mm-hmm. that little ladder in the garage and you mm-hmm. get up there in the attic. What what kind of insulation should yeah. I be expecting on there, and what is the best thing? Yeah. And is there ever too much? Is there such thing as too much insu- they've insulation? Got, they've got good types of insulation. They got multiple out there, so they've got foam, spray foam, and insulation. Not uh, for around the in. vents, no. 
No. no in attic spaces. No, no, I'm about. talking about just around the vent. Oh, you're talking about insulating the whole attic. I'm, I'm talking about what I've seen around the vents. Don't they, they do there, that around the they, vents? A lot of times the boots is what we call them. A lot of times they're insulated on the interior. Okay. Sometimes you could do a wrap on the exterior. You know? Okay. Um, those are generally what you see on the boots, you know. But okay. uh, again, there's different types. As far as attic space, really, that's kind of what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Um, anywhere between 13, you know, R30 level, uh, mm-hmm. 13 inches up to about 20, 22, something like that, or 60. Okay. Um, it's kind of average where you want to be in Florida. Okay. So I have one more question. Sure. This one's grody. Okay. So now I think that tube thing cleaning that is more grody. But <laughs> in the garage, when when we see that the, um, is that the intake that's out in the garage or something with the vent and okay. we know it's part of the air conditioning unit. Okay. But where that silver insulation is, you'll see mold there sometimes. You're so, saying in the garage, right? In the, the garage. The so, so yeah. So the unit is in the garage right. and now... How concerned should I be as a homeowner yeah. if I'm seeing some mold on that silver? Yeah. That's well, it's definitely uh, it's like the vent going up. It's like the vents going up. I've seen yeah. it a couple times in some houses mm-hmm. with it, you know with real estate doing real estate because right. you're looking for all that stuff. But a lot of times a homeowner won't even you know think to look at that. But yeah, yeah. if you look above your your unit, if it's in the garage and look yeah. above it, you may see this mold. And it's like right. what what should a homeowner do? Yeah, I mean, it's again, it's first of all, it's exterior, right? Okay. Um, it is definitely worth something looking at, um, depending on how much is grown there. It could be a sign that um, those connections, that plenum is what we call it, um, is not properly sealed on the air handler itself. Oh, okay. And there's an air gap, right? Okay. So, um, you know, it, it's worth looking at. It's worth making sure that your ductwork size properly. That okay. could be a sign. Again, if you have a whole bunch of moisture on the mm-hmm. outside of that air handler, mm-hmm. and again, I say that, you know, with a little bit of salt because these air handlers are sitting in garage spaces. Sure, that are hot. You know, some of them in uninsulated right. areas, and you got right. cold, chill there going through it, right? Right. Um, however, if your your air handler is sweating a lot, mm-hmm. condensating a lot, um, that's typically a sign that the ductwork is not sized properly. Oh, wow. Um, it's not... Uh, unfortunately, it's it's not uncommon to run. So it needs that. a larger duct so that the it air can redesigned. flow yep. a little easier. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yep. so let me ask you this: if if I'm building a house mm-hmm. and um, and if I have any say so with my builder, right. what should I be saying about my air conditioning? What, first of all, that I want you guys to <laughs> to, to do it. But what, what should I be saying? Like, I want it in the house. Like, I think I want yeah. everything in the house. I don't want it in the garage. Yeah, I mean, I would tell you again. In today's energy codes, mm-hmm. thankfully, are, are doing a great job with making sure that these systems are installed with proper duct work and in good conditions. Right. Um, in my opinion, I would tell you anytime you can have it in a closet space in condition space, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to perform better, but also as a homeowner, it's going to be a lot easier for you to maintain it with okay. those simple filter changes and, and uh, drain line cleaning. Yes. Right? So um, if you can avoid it in the attic space, I would say that that's preferred. Yes. It's a lot harder for a homeowner uh, to it's maintain cl- it. Oh you know? my gosh. I couldn't um, even imagine. But generally, like I said, as long as it's installed up to code, yep. um, which these days, again, most most new builders, that, that's exactly what they're doing. They're doing everything correctly by code. So awesome. you have to. So, awesome. Uh, it, it does a great job. Yep, yep. And that's why we have code enforcement, but they're not. <laughs> and permits, and you have to pull permits, and Correct. the city's actually checking everything yep. to make sure in the county. Mm-hmm. Now, is it the same way down in Volusia? Are they the same way as strict with the permits and everything yeah, as we are here? Know, there's a lot of different jurisdictions. So you've mm-hmm. got the county has its own jurisdiction. The cities have their own jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. So depending on where that property lies, whether it's a county property or whether it's a, a city property, mm-hmm. um, you've got state codes you have to follow, but also city codes as well. Okay. Um, so every location is a little different, but yeah, typically they're generally all around the same, same ballpark as far as kind of what they're looking for. Awesome. Well, I am yeah. so thankful for you guys and I'm so thankful that you're here. Same here. This is fun. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I have one more question for you and it's for anybody who's moving here from up north because we know everybody's coming to our awesome state and especially yep. right now while y'all have no leaves on your trees, we still have palm fronds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they never go away. Um, if somebody were to go to the beach mm-hmm. and get stung by a jellyfish, how okay. would you tell them to fix that? <laughs> Let's go the the clean route and get some vinegar is what okay. I would say. So I'm not going to say urinate on somebody because that works too, but let's go with some vinegar. So. Thank you so much, Brian, for being on the show today. I appreciate it. And everybody have a Thanks, great Ed. day. Keep cool or stay hot. It's up to you. <laughs> I have to wait 10 seconds. All right.